first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. No doubt. Tonight, y'all going to concentrate. Nam yo rengeki yo. Nam yo rengeki yo. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. We bring it on Brother Panic in a second. I'm going to bring on my co-host, Brother L. Are you with me? How the God doing this evening? Doing well, bro. How are you? I'm uh, doing pretty good. Doing wonderful. All right, all right. Again, we bring on Brother Panic. Let me see if he's here on the line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace, Lord. How you doing tonight? Peace, God. Peace, Almighty. Peace, Almighty. We starting to get this thing right, set it off. Oh yeah. Well, we know. We already, we already know you're gonna do that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, we we got cut off last week. We waiting for right. the crowd to come in now. Right. We're gonna get into the question and answer portion All of right. what we started last week. You know. Uh, now, you know, for those who weren't there last week, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Now, I'm not going to repeat everything that I said last week. You're going to have to go back to last Wednesday's show so you can get it. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays, these Wednesdays with a lean. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right, because Wednesday is Eight o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Yes, sir. We're going to go hard in with uh, very advanced levels of science. You're only at the beginning. You know, this is something me and Aline talked about. So right now, in this new golden age that is upon us, we're going to act accordingly. So you need to know our intentions straight out, and what we plan on doing, both of us. Is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. Give you shit to do. Shit, shit that you could walk home after you hear the show every Wednesday. Wow. Shit you could walk away from and have something to do. Shit you, could, shit you could feel accomplished about as opposed to feeling good with just another uh, one of the countless verbal sessions that we hear all the time. There's nothing wrong with those verbal sessions, 
but uh, you know, um, we're, we're interested in the people who's taking things to this next level. So that's right. what we're about. So we're going right. to look towards Wednesdays. Um, you know, Wim has been here every Wednesday, so you know, I'll, I'm, I'm at least once a month I'll be here, if not more. You know, all depending on the schedules. Leem has always been here on Wednesdays, and we will remain. Now that we got this combination going, you know what I'm saying, into the Wu-Tang. You know what I mean? So, you know, as the, as the crowd gets bigger before we get into this Q&A, you know, we're going to set it. Uh, just get some of these things out the way. Let right. Leem tell you some of the things taste. that he has coming up. Right. Give him a little taste of it. But um, if we want to give them a little taste of it, you know, like you said, don't go too much into esoteric or exoteric. But give them just a little bit of what you did talk about last yes. week. You know, catch them yes, up, yes. and I'll go into, you know, into my information in a second. Okay, sure sounds like a plan. What I what I found what I found out, um, you know, and you know, Facebook is our ever our guide. Facebook is our uh, our church these days. Mm-hmm. What I find what's going on, you know, as someone who uh, was avid about study avid about research. And in fact the criteria for for the brothers that you met you met like Aline told you last week, we met in about two thousand four. But the big deal was you were meeting other researchers. You get what I'm saying? You were meeting people who were stone hard on wanting to know just to know. So as the internet came this is this is this is pre internet days. As the internet came about Pre-Facebook. Yeah, uh, uh, MySpace, Facebook, right. and all the rest of that. That came about for the first time you had a more relaxed network of conscious folks. And in this relaxed network, uh, what you would find is, um, what you would find is, is, is the research aspect of it um, became downplayed for more of the, social friendliness aspect of it. Now, the researchers were social friends based upon their connection in terms of research, research material. Who who was dealing with what? People had their areas. People were sharp in certain areas. People were advanced in certain areas. And you always could count on the next researcher to pick in where you left off because the agenda in their hearts was to know just to know. So now that you have this mass abundance of folks that's just privy to information. For instance, you couldn't, there was no such a thing as Wikipedia. You get what I'm saying? Which most people are just Wikipedia scholars at this point. There was no such thing. You had to be, you had to go, you had to do some things to to accomplish some of this, some of this information that we freely, that you freely have access to. You know, like if beyond the internet, if I told you where to search for Baphomet, if this was your interest, most people wouldn't even know where to go. You get what I'm exactly. saying? If I told you to study the Temple of Luxor, where would you go? Most people wouldn't know. Really, chakras and crystals is the ceiling on true research where you could feel you could go somewhere. If there was no Amazon we're talking about. See, you get all this from Amazon. Where would you go? What bookstore would you go? You talking about researchers who knew the bookstores that don't even exist no more. East West is closed. That was the New York one. And and every state or whatever, every little hot spot had a spot where you were able to go. That doesn't exist. Borders and all of that is closed down. So right. before it was before before it was just easy to say Baphomet to do a search and find sources even of where you could get this from. People didn't even know where to start to get it from. So they relied on researchers who were the lecturers. So now, now that this information is readily available, and it seems that anybody can do it at any drop of a hat, you be, most most of us I find have become lazy. Um, they find out enough just to be able to repeat it, but the information, because it wasn't hard earned research, didn't penetrate, and because they're not genuinely researchers, they just want to be in the social framework of this game. They're not genuinely researchers. What you find is that because the information wasn't hard earned, the way that it comes into them isn't the same way uh, it was used by a researcher to transform themselves. 
In other words, if you went on a quest at Indiana Jones, the the riches that you obtain become that much more sweeter. If somebody give you just gives it to you and put it in your lap, you then take it for granted. So with the internet, most of this stuff is just put on your lap. Should you not use the internet? Internet that's not what I'm saying. I just think we can solve this by knowing the difference, and that difference comes in the words of esoteric versus exoteric thought. Now, exoteric thought is pretty much what we're suffering from. That is, as I pointed out in mm-hmm. the last uh, in the last lecture we did last Wednesday, exoteric study is the mundane understanding the everyday Joe understanding of whatever information you're dealing with. We, have on the Internet, have been learned or think, because uh, 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 at one point this statement would have been true, there was uh, mundane information, then advanced information. But at this point, this advanced information has now become mundane information based upon the mindset. So we can no longer say I'm studying esoteric this or Eso- or, or exoteric this We now have to change our mind Into an esoteric mindset To deal with the same information That's so readily available To the masses So It's very important to understand the difference Between the two And, I gave, and we broke that down thoroughly In this question and answer session That we do I want mo- more people to if, if you still feel you need to know the differences Keep your questioning along those lines, those lines, between esoteric and what works for you or what can you do or maybe what you're working with and I can help you, Brother Aleem can help you out with um, advice on how to change that little shift into a self-realization as opposed to just information that you share. Now, I know this would be true and I can make this bold statement because I get the questions after the fact. When it's the, the questions between just me, you, and, the, and it, me, you, Hotmail, and the wall, uh, you really get to show me what's going on. When I'm doing my classes, people really go to show me what's going on. They have an abundance of names, melanin, kundalini, pineal, and all the rest of that, but they do not have a practical understanding. When you see, one of the reasons, and I know the Spirit said, you need to do more shows with Aline because he's a brother who since 2004, and when, when we met, and he has documented lectures way before that. He's a brother who's been doing the work in terms of actualizing this work as opposed to just having concepts of this work. He's a brother who's mm-hmm. not just done it. He's taught people how to do it. You get what I'm saying? So right. to be on that same page, um, you, you need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become because at the end of the day, what I see our people are suffering from is the ability to actualize this. Talk about it all day, but actualize it, I, I really can't understand it. In fact, people were telling me last week people are still talking about basketball games in the chat room. And this is based upon, and I'm not mad at that, but this is based upon um, uh, you're not able to, nothing in this, you, you, you're interested for the social gathering. You get what I'm saying? And so we do see that we know you'll see a big social event. You'll come here and you want the chat room to be hot with a social event. It's, but then there's that aspect of us who are here to learn and want to go to the next level. That's who this. That's who we're interested in talking to. We're interested in those who go to the next level because there will be plenty of information for that. So before we get to questions, let me just get this stuff out the way so we're clear on this. You can email me for herb packs. One of the next things I believe I'm going to get into with Brother Aline, we're going to go into detail. We haven't discussed it yet. We, we, we talked about it briefly, about the pineal gland. I'm going to go very hard on some of the things you can do for the pineal gland, what the pineal gland is. We're just going to give the pineal gland some attention in the upcoming weeks things you can do to actually help to activate, to help to to work with your own pineal gland for light realization. Pineal gland distributes light around your body. So we're going to show you techniques to add light to the pineal gland and use that light, which is that knowledge. See, people are gaining this knowledge but don't know how to distribute or use that knowledge and to turn it into the next level. And the pineal is very intricate in that. So 
I sell herb packs that help to do that, that help to clear away and activate some of the atrophy that's uh, left in your comatose ass pineal. For that, you can email me, panicpack at hotmail.com. But one of the best things you can do right now, and we're about to start the new cycle, is join my class. I have a basic class on magic. It shows those who, or, and it seems those who, who say they are advanced, to those who know absolutely nothing, the basic core principles of magic, how to incorporate these magical principles in your life, the concepts behind them, so you know exactly what you're doing for you, how you can walk away adept and to start to use tools, all of these tools that you heard about, uh, your, your altars, your chakras, your crystals, your candle magic, the meditation, the fairy kingdom, laws, uh, the laws of Tahuti, Necronomicon. We go through all of these things plus more. These things, I'll give you a practical, everyday breakdown, an everyday fundamental understanding of these things so how you can start to deal with them to start to change your reality. For lack of a better word, we'll call it magic. I like what Aleem calls it, mind power. So um, mm. this class is the class to be in. Um, like I say, you don't have to take my word for it. This is about the fifth or sixth cycle I've been doing this. I do them about at least every, every month. So you don't have to ask me. You can ask some of the people who've taken the class with their emails. Um, um, I, uh, you can get, when I send you the information package, you can ask them what it's done for their lives. That's how comfortable and confident I am in this particular curriculum. It's for four weeks. For those who can make it, you can come to the house. For those who can't, I do it via Skype. It is incredibly cheap for what it is you get. And I do work out a payment plan with you. So the end of May is the next cycle. So if you want to get on to this next cycle, now's the time to start sending emails. Panicpack at Hotmail.com. And, um, and like I said, from there we will keep this little party going. Now, I, know if, I don't know if, Aline, you have anything you got coming up you want to talk about before we go yeah. into the Q&A. Definitely, definitely. Um, within a week and a half on May 22nd through 24th, for those into Indigenous Affairs, we will be at the United Nations um, meeting at the Indigenous Permanent Forum. For those who are into the law, into um, the Moorish history, um, into Washita, into Indigenous Affairs, as I stated. So come on out, check us out. Um, Y'all can email me at www.drlimelbay.com. That's Z-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y dot gmail. All right, um, at gmail, excuse me, um, dot com. So that's drlene at gmail dot com. Um, hit me up there. Also, we have classes, ongoing classes, in which that we've been doing for the last um, three years, in which that deals with Qigong, Tai Chi, Pranic Healing, Reiki, um, Ushi Reiki, Tibetan Reiki, Shekel Reiki, in which that we take you through, attune you, initiate you, also into the order of Melchizedek. Um, many things, Kundalini activation, pineal um, gland activation, um, all of these particular sciences. Um, you can also hit me up at drlene, um at gmail.com. And those classes are every Tuesday and Sunday, and they last for three months. And uh, we also work out a payment plan. Um, so y'all can check us out there. And also go to the um, new website, www.drlimelbay.com. Um, check out that website. Um, we have so much information on there. It's going to make your head spin. All right. Um, um, Brother Penny, you want us to go to the line? Yes, yeah, go right <laughs> to the line because one question would probably be a half an hour. If it's a exactly. Half a good so, this show. Yeah, you. We're going to go to area code 717. Area code 717, you're on the line. Peace, y'all. Peace, Peace brother. God. Peace. Peace, brother. Panic. How you doing? Peace, brother. Um, two quick questions. I got to try to uh, keep this moving. On. Know we got a lot of people on here tonight. Um, okay. my first, my first question is, um, I know a big part of quote unquote doing the work is trying to make it so that the spirits can see us because I know we're walking around here dead. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'm uh, I'm currently in a halfway house. I'm uh, I'm waiting to for, uh, transfer back to uh, Detroit, so mm-hmm. I can't exactly get, get get a panic pack at the moment. That's all good. But um, besides that, is there anything you can recommend for um, increasing our light? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I'm glad you said that. Spirits, um, they only can see light. So it's your light that needs uh, to be, uh, how would you say, uh, turned on for them to even have a communication with you. So um, if you're in that situation, um, the only thing you have is your own mind. First and foremost, that's the only thing you need. Everything else is frills, crystals, candles, uh, pendulums, uh, herb packs, you know, all of those things add on when you're in the situation to do it. But visualization is the only thing that can't be taken away from you. You have to visualize intensely, visualize light. Now, your pineal is filled with light. You you ever see close your eyes? Well, you ever look at a regular standard light, close your eyes, and you can still see that light when your eyes close and starts moving? Well, um, those are your two physical eyes getting an impression of this world. Now, once that uh, once your eyes are closed for a certain amount of time in the darkness and there's nothing, uh, there's no physical light messing with the pineal light comes on. Now, through your visualization and your able, and your ability to be able to deep focus on that particular light is communicate is communicating with spirits. Spirits are that light. So you so it's the, you need to find a meditative technique, and I mean I'll give you one a simple one. This is not a big deal, and concentrate on the light of the pineal. Now, what you're looking for back in return is at this point, because I'm assuming that based upon your question, you're starting out with it. Let's just look at it this way, or let's talk to those who are starting out. You're looking for your response in inspiration or intuition. So whatever question you're answering yourself, let's say how do I get my new house or get out this halfway house or I just want to know this just to know that. You're looking for a return of inspiration, what we've been calling coincidence, which is actually synchronicity. So you're looking for synchronicity, but the mundane way to understand synchronicity is coincidence. You get what I'm saying? And you're looking for uh, intuition or inspiration, something that you may now be inspired to do. And it may be weird. Some may say, you know something? I used to be a skateboarder. Something's inspired me to buy a skateboard and fucking one-leg skateboard up the street again or get some fucking <laughs> roller skates or whatever. And you may say this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but you got to remember, spirits are not dealing with logic. What they're trying right. to do is line you up with energy. So skating, let's say you was a skateboarder or a basketball player, for something more practical for a nigger, you know what I'm saying, a nigger, and you're a basketball player or something, <laughs> And um, or, or something you used to do as a child that that's something you won't do now. Let's just say you get what I'm saying, and you may have a over a overwhelming need to do that. So this come this is called inspiration. So as a grown up, we wouldn't even connect that to maybe paying rent, or connect that to a love affair, or connect that to calm or peace of mind, or to the answer the logical answer that you may have been seeking. But the spirit does not work with logic. It works with uh, feeling. It works with emotion. So what the spirit is trying to get you to do is get you into an emotional mind state, an emotional mind state to receive what it is you're supposed to, what what you're asking for. For instance, in the laws of attraction, they'll tell you everything about you receiving is about the mind state you have. So, for instance, they saying if you want a, a new bike, you do not curse the bike that you have. You get what I'm saying? You champion right. the bike that you have because you put yourself in the framework to receive a new bike. And, and of course, and you don't hold on to the bike you have because to be able or, or to whatever it is you have, you be able to throw it away so you open yourself to receive something new. So even on the laws of attraction level, um, they're still telling you, even when they're dealing with logic, how you have to line yourself up uh, mentally to receive or, or, or to realize. So with spirit, it's the same thing. What you're trying to do is 
or, or what you're trying to accomplish here is to line yourself up. So you got to, you need to, in other words, you need to know how spirit talks to you first and foremost. That's one of the things I teach in my class. No one knows how spirit talks to them, so everyone wants to be spirit. But if I said, well, what's the language of spirit? That's where I hear crickets. You get what I'm saying? So how can spirit talk to you if no one knows the language? Well, the language primarily, one of the primary, one of the primary languages how spirit talks to you is through symbol, symbology. So you're going to have to understand the concept of symbols and uh, general symbols, and then you're going to have to, on top of that, you're going to have to see what that symbol means to you. I always give the example, if your father took you to a baseball game, or, you know, as your childhood, if you were to dream about a bat, which is a symbol, um, that may represents warmth or learning, bonding, because your father took you there. Now, if your father whipped your ass with a baseball bat, you had a dream of a uh-huh. baseball bat, it may represent danger, trouble, don't go there. You get what I'm saying? Right. So, uh-huh. so there's a general understanding of that symbol, and because that is your subconscious mind where the spirit lives, and that's what's communicating with you. Your subconscious mind learns and speaks through symbols, primarily through symbols. It doesn't speak a fluid language because a picture tells a thousand words. So that one picture or symbol is a complex dialogue that the spirit is trying to tell you. So the symbol or the emotion being the vehicle Maybe I feel like skating, being free. You know what I'm saying? I've got right. chasing my class. Something told me to run outside with my titties out, flopping. I'm like, well, shit, go for it. And they did, and rent was paid. They said, lucky no cars was coming and all of it. I'm like, oh. look. In other words, <laughs> follow. There's certain shit you just can't follow. You get what I'm saying? Because if you left right. it to me, you know, most guys would be in Walmart just this, this, you know, broken hose. If you just let them do what they want to do, so it's, it's, we're not talking about things that get you in trouble, but but subtle things, and they speak very subtly. So through meditating, through meditating to answer that question, if you didn't have, see herb packs, candles, crystals, all of that stuff helps you on your path quicker. That's 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 the quick way to do things, which is nothing right. wrong with that. Like uh, for instance, in um, Da Vinci. And I think they're showing it in the HBO show, Da Vinci's Demons. Da yeah, Vinci yeah. used to say, and I, this is one of the things I taught in my class, and one of the guys in my class told me they were showing this. Da Vinci used to light a candle, and the candle light would flash on the ceiling. He would focus on that light and go into trance. Nostradamus just, they, that's what you call scrying. Nostradamus would fill a black bowl with water and scry or look deeply into that water. It would it would distort his vision, his everyday vision. Because remember, and I said this last week, everything you're trying to do spiritually is a pathway to distort your ver- your 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 normal everyday brain, your normal everyday awareness. You're trying mm-hmm. to distort. That's what every ritual, every trance like state, every meditation, every chant is, every sigil is, every every candle is, every color frequency is trying to get you beyond your everyday thinking. So scrying is one of the things you can do um, that you just can sit on the edge of your bed and do without any other tools. You get what I'm saying? A crystal is excellent for scrying. A black object is excellent for scrying. You just look deeply into that where your perception is altered to see what it is you see. And Nostradamus got all his predictions doing that. So what it does um, the the mind has different brainwave frequencies, and the one we're interested in is delta, theta, delta, and, and gamma, and all the rest of that. The one we're interested in getting into is the alpha state, because the alpha state is the mind state or the brain frequency of the subconscious mind, and right. it's very easy to go into alpha state. Alpha state. Um, uh, when you're driving on the highway for a long period of time, you uh-huh. zone out. You're there, but you, you're there, but you're not there. And if somebody asks you right. to explain that, you say, "Well, I, you know, but I, I was there." Because if somebody would uh, cut in front of you, you become instantly aware. Meaning your awareness is, is totally gone, but you're in your subconscious mind. Right. Um, during what they call after work. Hey. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was saying okay. Mm-hmm. Now, okay. 
um, after work, when you uh, uh, come home and you uh, sit in your easy chair, you know, use, it used to be at six, you know, six o'clock when the news would come on, and you, usually uh, that's when they would, that's when you would start to relax. That's why they put it on at six to put the fear in you. Then it would be eight o'clock after dinner, and that would be called what they call prime time. That's why news would come on at eleven too, because eleven at that point was the second shift. That you come home after work with, if they're now it's just twenty four hours because you know it's no longer a standard work experience in America. The right. point is, um, because it was a form of brainwashing, because they understood once you got off from work, off of that same routine, you would go into alpha state, the state of the subconscious mind, and that's and and that's when it was peak time for advertisement. On TV or prime time, hmm. it was prime. You were primed for, for advertisement. Prime for advertisement. I mean, and like I said, they go on all day with the subconscious mind. In fact, in the fifties, they urged men to paint the kitchens green because it was the color of the heart chakra, and right. it would have the wives. It would have your wives stay in the kitchen. They didn't want to leave the kitchen. Institutions, jailhouses, and all that was painted green. So they know your shit. They know your shit. They know your wow. chakras. They know your color frequency. I mean, you know, I've, these are things I've talked about before. H and R Block's logo being green. They want you to feel safe at this time. You know, all the uh, fast food places are either red, red yellow, yellow. In, in, uh-huh. in orange for the lower chakras. The ones that want you to stay are brown. Brown represents the earth or home. And, you know, like uh, certain restaurants, if you go in and it's empty, you won't come back. McDonald's, you go in there when you, I, I'm sure when you used to eat that shit, you used to go in there and hope ain't nobody in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good, McDonald's is empty, let me order my shit. But then if you go to a classy restaurant with your lady on, how come this motherfucker is empty? <laughs> Are they giving out the tomain poison? Or uh-huh. some kind of shit like that. So, so that's why the classier restaurants are brown or blue. Zaxby's out here is blue and brown, and they have the this is a fast food place with the atmosphere where they want you to stay. Blue, of course, creativity. They want you to stay there and talk, chop it up, bullshit, make it seem like you know we serve real chicken and shit. That rest of that bullshit, <laughs> barely working in and out. And you notice that old people stay in these fast food restaurants because they're trying. They're about they're they're about to die. You know what I'm saying? So red. Orange and yellow represents light. You get what I'm saying? So they want to right. sit around this life all day while you sit there eating a fucking dollar menu, looking at your phone, scoffing shit down, ready to go. They do this on purpose. The Matrix, the whole entire movie was green because they're trying to get you to feel safe and sleep in the Matrix. So they knew all of this shit. This is not like we do it. See, that's another thing we need to get off of our mind that we're doing something that's so small and different. Our right. occult science is what runs the planet, the end. There's nobody trying to get into our shit. It, th- there's nothing else. There's no opposition. You get what I'm saying? It's just what you don't know is how they're working that shit. You get what I'm saying? Right. Sound, sound and lights. They're trying to um, – that's why you must understand – your entire chakra system thoroughly and what emotions attached to what. Because really, fuck the Illuminati, they've been fucking you up just off of emotional control. Light and color frequencies, fuck all that. The chemtrails, they might as well just spray cocoa mango. You, you know what I'm saying? That's in, in the clouds, because that's not doing nothing. These light right. frequencies, these chakra controls, these sound frequencies, these emotions that they're inspiring in you through these logos, and see, if you don't understand, see, if we don't understand what the subconscious mind is, what the spirit is, how could you can control spirit? What is, if I ask people what is spirit, 95% of them wouldn't even know. You get what I'm saying? They think it's their dead grandmother. How are you accessing it? How can you be manipulated? What, can you be possessed? What, you, all of that's happening now. You get what I'm saying? Or for your technology. So we're so busy worried about Illuminati and these other things, we don't realize our technology is the technology, and that's it. That's it. So once you get into your shit, you supersede any of the rest of this shit. And no, and like I said, black people will do anything but go into self. They don't believe in themselves. As much as we say 
Queen and Hotep and you the king, we really don't believe that shit. Because if we believe we, that, we, 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 we want to champion it for our self-esteem. But we really don't believe it. Because if we believe it, then you would access the goddamn your princely robes. Remember Eddie Murphy said that? Let them have our princely robes. No, you conscious now. Now you need your princely robes back. Right. And we're not, we're just wearing, we're just putting on the uh, the pageantry of it. Yeah, I got the melanin and my kundalini. Oh, my goodness, you're making my kundalini rise. <laughs> you're so pretty. <laughs> it's like the pageantry, it's a, it's a, it's a fucking beauty pageant, pageant of dreads and onks and all the rest of that. Now, I'm not trying to get down on us. I'm saying, let's get it on. It's right there. This is your technology. There was a TV show in the 80s called The Greatest American Hero. That shit was all about us. It was about this yeah. nigga found this magical suit, but with no instructions. So yeah, all of this fly. shit he could do, could, had to learn to fly. He was flying all fucked up, flying upside down, and all the rest of this kind of shit. He just didn't know. That's exactly what's going on with us. We have a magical suit, and let's just say melanin to make it a little bit more dramatic, and we don't know how to access it. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and we thinking by saying I have dreads is the way to access it, by wearing an onk is the way to access it, by tattooing Haru is the way to access it, putting your name, changing your name to something spectacular is a fucking is, is, is the way to access it. It is not. It is just simply not. And you know it, I know it, and the questions that I get all day, I'm clear on it. The questions of people in the class, I'm clear on it. I'm not finding anybody that's tapping in. I'm finding people who knows how to argue information better. So simple, one of the things I learned as a researcher, and most researchers know, there's a process of building this suit back up. Your melanin will do anything you ask of it. And we're not asking nothing of it but to look hot. You know what I'm saying? The best thing you got is black don't crack. You get what I'm saying? No, you, 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 you constantly should be in a place of taxing yourself, but you have to know some of the basic things of what it is you're going for. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Most people don't understand that spirits are just light. And you're trying to obtain and work with light. Not your seven chakras light, because that's the lights of this realm. You're trying to – spirits are nothing but – Communicating with the other degrees of other degrees of light, exactly. And there's there's specific methodologies for doing that. Period. You're not going to get away from it. You're not going to Wikipedia your way into the spirit world. You're not going to YouTube lecture your way into the spirit world. You have to learn how to deal with spirits and become spirits. And it's spiritual. And it's something within you that must be triggered. It's it's a it's a it's a discipline within you. It's a it's a building up or a calisthenic you must do to build that energy up to even have a communication with that particular levels of light. I didn't just turn on one day. I kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And I gained more and more information, more and more insight, with more and more deeper and never satisfied myself. Never felt that I had to go and start putting up status messages about what the fuck is going on and what I'm doing. It doesn't, it doesn't even work like that. What can I do? What can I accomplish next? And all I'm saying, I'm saying this because the best thing I could do is say, I'm willing to show you the same thing too. And what if, if my whole particular plan doesn't work for you, I'm sure someone who's managed to to make some accomplishment, some of the shit I'm saying is going to work for you or whatever you're doing. The difference is no one's doing that work, and we're trying to get that work. That's what this Wednesday night is going to be about. You don't have to depend on me that you'll walk away from 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 this shit knowing how to do some shit on your own. Most so so for you meditation and and start communicating with the light. You'll start to see light in your pineal. Close both your eyes. Look with your eyeballs towards your pineal. You'll start to see light imagery. See what it inspires you to do. See what you feel. And listen, this is an occult. Line right here. Fake it until you make it. Meaning you make shit up. Who's who? The fuck is telling you? There's no. Camites understood this. I'm telling you. Here's the big secret. You don't have to agree with me to find light. So meaning we're not all trying to get to one place to understand and to find light. 
certain shit you just need to be on the same way, same kid. You know, you ain't gonna dr- find life by drowning kittens. We know, we all know that. But in your study, you need to fake it until you make it. Say you're gonna rebuild your liver. Just say you're gonna do it and say it's working. Who the fuck am I to tell you it's not? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the mentality I'm talking about. So the fake it until you make it just means say you're gonna do it and say you've done it. And and just based upon the laws of attraction, they tell you you do it long enough, it becomes true. You get what I'm saying? You believe in it, it becomes true. You ever tell a lie so long that you believe that shit? That was on tour with Curtis Blow. <laughs> and you forget <laughs> shit was a lie. <laughs> you just tell that shit. Well, yeah, when I used to, me and Curtis, me and Curtis used to do this. Like, motherfucker, you ain't never was on tour with Curtis Blow. You just told niggas that shit so much. You forgot that it started out as a fucking lie. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Fake it until you make it. You know what I'm saying? You ever, or you ever meet a motherfucker that lies so much they don't even know they lying no more? You have one of them friends that just be lying, yeah, kid, that was, yeah, that was my girl. Like, yeah, that girl is fine. Yeah, yeah, that was my girl before. <laughs> you like, what, nigga? Yeah, yeah, she was my girl. Like, yeah, you know, um, I used to do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I just did that the other day. You're like, what, nigga? You ain't do that. Cucumber water, nigga, stop. You know what I mean? Yeah, we used to go. We, I used to work on the farm. Yeah, I worked on the farm too. You're like what? <laughs> like a nigga just lies so much, and they really believe that shit. Who say they wrong? What, what they're gonna die? And somebody gonna go? You know you was a liar. You gonna, you ain't going to heaven. If they believe that bullshit, if I believe the fire hydrant is green and I live I live my life accordingly, come on, ain't no right or wrong in that. It's just it is what it is. So you don't want to go crazy and be. You know, because after a while, you don't want to be outside with an umbrella, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, in, in the summer, you know, I got my fucking umbrella, you know what I'm saying, but you want to be able to say whatever you're telling yourself, you need to convince yourself. In other words, you don't need to convince the world it's raining, you just need to believe it's raining. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, this shit works. I mean, my sons believe that Farnsworth Bentley was hot. <laughs> That's how young they was. You know what I'm saying? So we thought this was ridiculous. I was like, yo, what you think about that? Funnels were Bentley was cool. Like, it's, nothing's real. You know what I mean? What's real? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fonz were Bentley was cool. I'm like, man, that was oh, Puffy's God. goddamn college roommate. College fucking roommate. <laughs> no, not Fonsworth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's from their age, you know what I'm saying? Oh. They're ready to go defend Fonsworth's honor. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, <laughs> <"Shit>, <laughs> this shit ain't even adding up. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. He did care with the damn umbrellas, too, yo. Yeah, they came with the umbrellas. Nigga was doing that, that, that just holding the umbrellas. I was like, yeah, Farnsworth, that nigga got style. So I'm like, wait a minute, what? I said, let me do a check. What did yo, y'all think about Farnsworth? Yo, and he believed it so much until they gave that until they gave his ass a damn um, fashion line. TV show. Oh, yeah, you got an L.A. Yeah. Exactly. The nigga's name is like a, 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 a collaboration of fucking Chauffeur and Butler. Exactly. Farnsworth <laughs> Bentley. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mr. Ben, Mr. Farnsworth. So like I'm sitting there like this shit don't even add the fuck up. And, or and and then on the other side, how you know transformation is my little niece. You know what I'm saying? Singing all that Mace shit, Senorita. <laughs> then when Mace went to church and came back, she's like, "What the fuck happened to Mace?" And I told her, "Nothing happened to fucking Mace. She always <laughs> sucked. You just older now." Now you just see it when we knew when we was grown. You exactly. know what I'm saying? He always sucked. So, <laughs> so yeah. you know, she's like, God damn, that was terrible. Welcome back. She's like, <laughs> she's like look, he always sucked. So, 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 like I said, it's nothing's started, real. You, you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, it's not started, real. He started the retarded rap, yo. Yeah, the retarded rap, yeah. that, that fucking... That that he sound afflicted, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> licky, 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 I got two brown Lexus, no Lexus. Like, like this nigga sound a straight afflicted ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Oh man! <laughs> you need to start a goddamn fundraiser for that nigga. 
<laughs> Licked it, ass nigga. And, but 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 the thing is, I, I guess what I'm getting at nothing's real. Like you know what I'm saying? One, see, why they think Farnsworth Bentley is the greatest, and why she said Mace was the greatest and would have died for him, and then she's going, "This nigga looks like a big headed idiot at this point." It's like you can't count on nothing. That, that makes me when I look at as an occultist, as an eschatologist, I'm sitting there going. I get it. You cannot marry yourself to what you call it real. You know what I'm saying? Real is what? You know what I'm saying? It's not real that you're looking for a so-called truth. You're just only looking for your truth, I guess you, I guess you have to say, or your reality. Exactly. The problem is we spend most of our time trying to convince others of our right. reality, and okay. that's folly. That's folly. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this, and that's also a thing I learned from Bobby Hemmings. If there's anybody on the planet that believes his reality, that's him, and that's genius for what it is. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, true. I, I, yeah, I'm like, some, I'm, I'll tell him, some of that shit you're saying is fucking outlandish, but then I get it. It's not up to me to believe that. That's his story, and he's writing his story. You get what I'm saying? So we have to write our own story. So that's yeah. a big part of it, too. You sit right on the edge. You don't need anything. If you're in a position to get an herb pack, or take any of these classes, excellent. It's going to be a shortcut from those who are initiated based upon their research, not based upon a ceremony, which I talked about last week, based upon their research and going through that. And then from that, and then from that, um, um, I can offer you a, a shortcut in terms of your study, but you still have to study. What I would say I got, one of the primary things I got from Bobby Hemmett was a short path. To, to during my study. Otherwise, I'd be taken a long way or fell into the Wikipedia scholarship of it. But uh, my book library, which is massive, is based upon sharing with Bobby, who's been dealing with books, giving out scholar, scholarship for years. To be able, I say, well, I want to study that. He was able to turn up five books for me and say, well, that's a good book, that's a good book, that's a good book. That chicken came before that egg. So with the five books that he would recommend, I get five, two or three books on my own that I've seen, and then now you have a complete uh, holistic understanding on one area. So it, so let me say that as well. Whatever you're studying, get more than one book from more than one author on that area. Remember, authors are only people who profess to have gone through whatever process they're writing about. So they are not the gods. They are not – it doesn't define – it doesn't, it doesn't define you. It won't make or break you. It will offer you expert advice. Ultimately, it's up to you. And it, it, I go into detail on that difference in my classes. Ultimately, it's up to you, the, the understanding what books do. You have a left brain and a right brain. Ideally, you're supposed to work them in unison, but the left brain needs to be satisfied and the right brain needs to be satisfied. The left brain needs to be satisfied with logic, Deduction and reasoning That's what books are for See any In the right brain is intuitive Creative uh, This Let's just say magical So the magic That we're into The magic that we're dealing with The magic that That, that we're all trying to Step into We need um, when you, you will see shit that is non-logical Now for me Because I read the book I was able to not doubt the magic based upon I had a logical foundation. So they, that's how they work together. So when I started talking to Jimi Hendrix, my, if I didn't read the books and, and dealt with the magic and the paths and the exercises, the logical exercises, the logical rituals that I did, if I didn't do with that, I wouldn't have thought I was – it would have totally escaped me, not only that I was speaking to Jimi Hendrix, that I could speak to Jimi Hendrix. You get what I'm saying? So when, when all of this mystical, magical shit was happening, I could say this, 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 that happened, and here's the book you could get. Satisfy people. So anything, any cuckoo thing I can tell you that was spiritual, I could back it up with a book. That's, that's another thing that I learned from Bobby Hemmett. Be able to back that goofy shit up with scholarship. You get what I'm saying? And see, it, it is not just so I can prove that to people. You need to do that for yourself. I can give you a logical right. understanding and a spiritual understanding about the same subject. And that's, that's a holistic approach 
or an esoteric, one of the esoteric approaches that you need to do to your study. So, so you could um, ultimately, this is all. It's not just. It, I should never hear the question, "What can I do without a herb pack?" It's like, "What can I do with a herb pack?" Because what I do without a herb pack or classes or, or any of these things. All I need is myself. There's a statement in the occult sciences, you don't need anything in the universe, and you don't. You do not. All you need is your gut. All you need is a place to get into self. You get what I'm saying? See, the herb right. pack it shuts down your brain functions and makes alpha state prevalent. The subconscious, your programming is right. So that's why the herb pack works differently for different folks because – when this in the subconscious state, whatever you're programming your subconscious mind with, which is what this is all about, the subconscious mind dictates your reality. So crystals, I show you in my class that every single thing you do, I link it all back to the subconscious mind. And I do that shit delightfully and show you how that's what, that's the only thing you're trying to do is you're reprogramming your own mind. And in the class, I give you technique after technique. You need to get in this class. This is this is probably some of the best shit you can get involved with. You will love it. Panic Pack at Hotmail dot com, or you need to get the herbs I got if you can get it. I know you you know you get it when you're ready, brother. There's no thing. But like I said, I'm giving out plenty of techniques. You don't need to buy a damn thing from me to get to get busy. You get what I'm saying? If you're in the position, great. It helps me to keep the party going. But other than that, and the book is coming too. We're editing it now. We're halfway through. We're gonna do. Then we're gonna do the line editing and so on and so forth. I want y'all to get that. That that's something else that is, is a must. This book, I went very, very deep into a lot of. You see how long it should take? Like five years. Hmm. So I, I was when I announced that I made that shit seem like it was coming out next week, <laughs> which is uh, like six years ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But now it's coming soon. So now, um, one of the things you want to do in your meditation, and I've given out this meditation before, um, I learned to meditate for my father at age six years old. That was his shit. Wow. He was a meditative mm-hmm. motherfucker. So, um, and, you know, he had all the books of those old days. Swami, whoever, was hot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Dianetics is a, the first copy of Dianetics and all the rest of that shit. But he was he was he was an excellent meditating motherfucker. And one of the things he taught me as a child, he said, "What you have to do, and I'm giving this meditation now. Just think of an apple, and with that apple, what you want to do with your mind is experience the apple with your five senses. So, right. with your mind, how this is something you've done every day. You've touched the apple all your life. You want to touch it, taste it, see it, hear it. You know, as you're crunching it and and feel it." So you, you're experiencing the apple with your mind. What this is allows you to do because your brain, your everyday logical brain, your everyday brain is what you, you're, you're trying. This thing is chaotic, and I won't even use chaos because that's a that I would say it's more it, it more has akin with havoc, with madness, chatter, constant chatter. So with any meditation, what you're trying to do is get in control of your chatter and take that brain power to one point where the subconscious mind then is able to have a fluid conversation with you. Now, where the chatter totally stops is when you're sleeping and the subconscious mind is having a full-blown conversation with you. Those are called dreams. The problem is none of us know how to astral travel, which will lead you into lucid dreaming so you can decipher your dreams. That's another thing I teach in class how to get to the point because when you're sleeping, that's when your subconscious mind is having a full-blown conversation with you in the form of symbols, as I pointed out. That's why you're on your grandmother's couch, then there's an elephant, and then there's a goddamn you doing cartwheels, and then the next thing you know, it's all symbols. In fact, if you go to the movies, a movies are just frames of pictures, frames of symbols being ran made to look like a movie. And so is mm. actually what's happening on planet Earth. So everything is nothing but moments and pictures or pictures of now moments being flashed back. Past is nothing but a now moment of that of that particular now that you can visual you can visualize. See, remember a movie that you've seen is filmed in the past. So Star Trek that's coming out Friday is past moments, so called past moments. We'll be seeing it again. It becomes now moments again. 
We're watching this over and over. Eddie Murphy coming to America over and over. And now, now moments, right. meaning the only thing we have is now. That's the same way this world is set up, just like cinema is set up. A bunch of pictures, and that's the same way the spirit world is set up. That's why you dream a bunch of moments, symbols that are constantly moving that look like a picture. That's why your dreams are more sporadic. The more you get into lucid dreaming, the more your dreams become less uh, uh, un or what seems to be unrelated symbols into a fluid movie. So now if I was to dream and I'll go to dream and, and there's some people when you have, you'll notice when people tell you I had a real powerful dream, they're able to give you all of these details. They're able to say, well, I was there and I walked and I looked to the left, I looked to the right, then I looked at my watch and I looked at this, I looked at that, I looked at that. Then you have them dreams, I was in a car, then I was fell, then I was in my old church, then I was over here, then I was, then I was doing jumping jacks. It's like that's not a lucid dream. What happens is most of your consciousness stayed in your body because you were that tired. When you get into the astral traveling or lucid dreaming, you're bringing your consciousness into the dream world. Therefore, the, the panic that I know out here comes in the dream world with me. Therefore, my dreams become lucid. Therefore, the conscious mind, the chatter, has now become quiet and the subconscious mind reigns supreme. When you're every day waking, your subconscious mind becomes quiet and the chatter reigns supreme. That's why you sit there, am I on the phone? Am I got a phone battery? I need to go to the store. I'm going to eat later. I'm kind of thirsty. Did I do that? Did I turn off the TV? Did I turn off the stuff? You can drink all of that shit in less than one minute. You get what I'm saying? Do I need to put that in the microwave? Do I need to wear a coat? Is it hot today? Do I need to wear my socks? Oh, my God, I forgot to put on this. Where's my keys at? You can think all that one. That's chatter. That's everyday chatter. So now with meditation, if you're able to focus on things like an apple, or banana, and then you can get into more complex things. What happens is you begin to uh, you be, you begin to in the waking state, in the uh, or in the alpha, but you're technically in alpha state in this meditative state. You begin to shut down the chatter to be be able to communicate with the subconscious mind in the waking state. Therefore, let the programming begin. You start to visualize and tell yourself what it is you want to accomplish. You see yourself paying your rent, because that's all we've come down to, getting your girl or that house you want to be in. You get what I'm saying? Uh, uh, for me, I'm at a point now, I'm trying to, I'm have, I'm trying to have uh, uh, realizations of self. So now, in my lucid dreaming, I'm, I'm, I'm down to one fucking reoccurring dream. See, because in your dreams is where you're dealing with your equations. So now I've done so much work, I'm down to one equation, and I'm sure that equation is either why I'm here or how I'll die. I am glad to say my queen, Khadija, shows up in that dream, so I made the right decision. I see her quite (laughs) often in the dream world, so that means she's a part of the game. So, uh, But it's the same reoccurring. You know, people have reoccurring dreams, but most of the people's dreams will be these new things because – See, your subconscious mind is always giving you answers. So if you're at your job and you're having a hard time, you notice you'll go to sleep and you'll dream about your job. Or you'll hear that mm-hmm. statement, well, let's sleep on it. Well, because your subconscious mind is always giving you answers. We just don't know how to listen. We don't understand the symbols or the dreams. We're so, right. busy, we're so busy trying to figure out a name and a hot new onk. We don't understand our mind, our spirit. The, the answers is always there. We have never been lost. We just don't know how to read the text anymore from our own minds. Right. That's what we're going to start this, bringing back. And, yeah, let me say yes, this. sir. I don't want to interrupt, but I, I got to say this because um, you're dropping it. Um, let, me, let me tell them that another point in which that if you miss the dream world message, mm-hmm. the spirit or the nature or the nature itself will give you symbols here by way of animals. Mm. This you get the Native American science of the totem from. Mm-hmm. And you will have to know what these animals mean when you see these animals often or a lot. You know, right. they're trying to tell you a message. They're carrying you um, on some type of message. And so you can actually watch nature itself. We right. Because that is nature or the nature's or spirit. Um, or 
also trying to still convey you, if you miss it in the dream world, it still would be brought forth yes. in yes. this conscious realm. So whether it's in the subconscious or in the conscious, the ancestors or the spirits will always still try to convey those, these messages to you. And so you just have to be aware enough for, um, you know, to pick up what is being said. If, like I said, you miss it in the dream world. Go ahead, Brother Pan. Sorry about that. Yes, yes, that's a very good point. I, I agree with that. That's, well, absolute, that's an absolute great point um, because people t- t- tend to think this as well. You may have a dream and you may not understand it, so you'll wake up and go, damn, I don't get that dream or I forgot that dream. I'm lost out. That's con- that's that's au contraire mon frere. <laughs> um, if, see, uh, see, what Aleem is right, first of all, nature is probably one of the first vehicles that you get communication. Nature is pure inspiration. It is dealing with negative ions. That, that's why when you go into nature, you are purely, totally inspired because it is spirit trying to communicate to you through that animal totem or even through the plants themselves. And you will get that if you look at a, and this is something I do teach in class when I deal with the fairies. Um, Okay, and I don't want to give too much away, but I'll, I'll go through it really quick. Um, let's. We had a, a knowledge of how to build pyramids and and anchor watch and all the great shit that we know we that that's proof in the pudding. The, these magical cities, these architectures, at least that 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 they still can't duplicate today. We know that is the black man's us and we know we had that ability. So there's so right. th- that that knowledge or that understanding of how to do that is a represent it represents light. Now what we're clear on now is the average nigga couldn't build a pyramid no matter what Eddie Griffin said. <laughs> nigga <laughs> couldn't build a pyramid. <laughs> so now um so if we know from our third grade white science class that energy doesn't die, it only changes that means right. if that knowledge, which is light, knowledge is light, it couldn't die. It had to shift somewhere. So the knowledge of how to build a pyramid is no longer the knowledge of how to build a pyramid, but the light still exists. That light or knowledge I teach in class has shifted into what we call nature and inspiration. Now, in the fairy story, the fairies, there's a, there's a documentary called Gateway to Fairy. Everyone must yeah. watch this. Something I recommend for class. I know it's on Hulu now. I don't know if it's on Netflix anymore. Gateway to Hulu Fairy Plus. and, I, and you, Hulu, Hulu Plus. Now, um, if you can get to see this, uh, he talks. He he. This white. Uh, he, he was he was talking about things that I was doing before I knew there was a logical understanding in terms about how to talk to nature and how that trees. If you look at a body of trees, if you scry, as I pointed out, into a body of trees, what you will start to see is images will start to come back towards you. And remember, that's nature also speaking to you. That's how the fairies talk to you. Now, he talks about, and you hear this in mythologies, that the fairies live, this is just mythology, but you've you got to understand how to decode these symbols. The fairies lived on earth with human beings. The fairies were knowledgeable, and so were human beings at one time. The fairies shared this information with human beings back and forth. The humans became dumber, dumbed down, so the fairies could no longer communicate with the human beings, so they had to go into the realm of the invisible world or the realm of nature. And the only way they can communicate with man is through inspiration and symbol. So what they're talking about is our Knowledge. What they're talking about is our quantum understanding. They're talking about information that we had on the planet that now has been absorbed back into a quantum reality. But but since we've accessed this light already on the planet, we still have ways to connect to it. So you won't be able to go into nature and find out how to build a pyramid. But that energy, that inspiration has transformed into something you can use today, i.e., that's how you made rap music and shit like that today. Because that power of pyramid building has now transformed into a new form of inspiration called hip-hop and you don't stop. I'm not saying pyramids are hip-hop, 
I'm just saying that 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 form of knowledge and creativity has transformed into what we have now as black folks as our modern forms of creation through inspiration. So you're still accessing the same information, just transformed so it's able to be used today. Because if a black person built a pyramid today, I don't think we could do anything. There's nothing we would be able to do with that. All we can really say is, well, thanks for doing that. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's, we, we won't be able to access what they would. We still, people still, the, the, the jury's still out on what they were doing with omelets, omelets and pyramids. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And Tesla actually showed what they were really doing. Because they showed, they said, Tes- Tesla was trying to make the whole world wireless. Free internet. The whole internet, wireless internet, mm-hmm. we know is from Nikola Tesla. So exactly. he was saying, you, we, there has to be something that, or ta- like how we have these towers now for your wireless. Uh-huh. There has to be towers around the world that are able to communicate information. And then, boom, the spirit came through and said, yeah, they were called omelets. And then, yeah. this, then I'm watching this shit. They said, well, it would have to hit a point in the space and be sent back down to Earth. A satellite. So, oh, the moon. The moon is a satellite. The moon has exactly. all of these fucking holes and craters in that we say, oh, that's, that's rocks have hit that shit. They said, no, it was the obelisk sending information, beaming it back to Mexico. That's how we were able to communicate and transport information and energy all around the world. The same satellite system we're doing now to, to watch I Love Lucy. We already had this bullshit. The, so their technology is mimicking our old technology, our technology that has transformed into new life, or we, go, or we call it as hip-hop and, 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 and Timberland and all that other shit that we made hot. You know what I'm saying? Job Turkey. And all the rest of that bullshit, <laughs> all that shit is transformed. It, you know, all that shit we transform from from because we needed it now. You get what I'm saying? All this shit is iconic now, but in a in a different time, in a different age, it may be is beneficial for us to build cities. We build no fucking cities now. We destroy these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm You have seen you have seen the landscape. <laughs> They ain't building shit no more. Oh, so, so, but you know what I'm saying? A half a chicken and fried rice, you say that shit, every nigga know that. You know what I'm saying? That's sure. nothing but Egyptian bear transform into a half a chicken and fried rice. <laughs> and the, the 40 ounce is nothing but the size of how you used to make Egyptian bear. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, so in other words, it's, so, I, so let me be clear. I'm not saying one thing is the other. I'm just saying all of that knowledge or light had to go somewhere. It went into nature and inspiration. Exactly. And, right. and, and so now when we're inspired to do our nigger shit, which we think is nothing, it's actually where that, how that energy is being funneled or we're funneling the energy back to us. We're not in a position to build pyramids and anchor watts and, and cure this, that, even though we're still doing all that. You got to remember, in our ignorance, which is what you're having now, we still run the world. We turn our hat backwards, the entire world turns their hat backwards. We wear slacking, jeans slacked off our ass, the entire world wears jeans slacked. In, in, in fucking Libya, every two kids had a doing the butt shirt on when EU wow. came out. You know what I'm saying? Man. You see them niggas starving, but they had a shirt that said doing the butt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Because of us. So we still run the world in our ignorance. The energy is just transformed into what we think is nothing. Now, let me tell you. Now, the deeper I got in the spirit world, the more I'm, should not from from day one, but the deeper I got, where I'm thinking I'm going to find some, I'm going to be sitting there going, um, ra, um, nefa, ra, none of that. You talking to regular niggas. Some of them gate days that you think are so deep in your chakra system, I had to get through them shits by playing the fucking dozens. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just start ranking on you. You may pass if you say a funny rain. I had niggas roll him. You in the spirit world ranking with niggas. I, when, I, when you get up, you get to go, oh, I get it. All of this nigga shit is the only thing that matters. While you trying to be this all dream, uh, uh, you know, get to the mountaintop and all the rest of that shit you're trying to do is fucking folly. 
I haven't seen nobody come, ooh, I'm the goddess with an arm. I see some foul mouth hoes, and they the goddess. I see some hood, some grit cooking hoes in the spirit world, and they the goddess. Ain't no chain. It's what you do under pressure that's, that, that is what makes you beautiful. You know what I'm saying? All that shit, you talk, you're trying to do shit that's not under pressure. See, see we're, we're, we're trying to transform ourselves. See, that's not for here. We're trying to transform ourselves into this beautiful thing here. You get what I'm saying? No, the pressure that we're going through here is the definition of that beautiful thing is the end result. You get what I'm saying? If you here, you here to do the work. You get what I'm saying? You here to feel this thing so nothing like this ever could happen again. You leaving no stone, stone unturned. No stone unturned. So the idea here is, the idea here is, you don't want expectations when you're doing this. You right. have to, one of the most key foundations, the key element in this, is you want to be at, see where this takes you. This is the most fun adventure. That's why I tell you all the time, don't ask me to give you details. I'll, I'll help you, but I'm trying to help you to be, help you to do you. Because if I give you right. details, I, I'm fucking up your path. So I'm saying, no, you do that and see what happens. Well, Patty, when I smoke a herb pack, what's going to happen? I don't know. Smoke it and tell me. I can tell you what right. happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You, need to, you need to be able to write your own story. This is you came exactly. here. Yeah. You were born here. You made the choice to come here. You get what I'm saying? So, right. so, so the idea is, so the idea is, it's you who's supposed to be having this experience. You get what I'm saying? And we mm-hmm. need to stop kidding ourselves. We're not having the experience. We're having the experience of a social group, and everybody's everybody's friend, and then you, you say a couple of nice goddess words, fuck around and get some pussy, you know what I'm saying? But at the end, no one, I, you, you don't really see no one going, wow, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I, I, I realized something that was, you don't hear no realizations that is just like breathtaking, you get what I'm saying? No testimony. Everything's how can I, how can I, how can I? All right, I'm not mad at that. But I'm just saying, if we're going to be how can I, how can I, Wednesday nights, Brother Leem show, with Brother Paddock as a guest, we're going to stop this how can I and to, to a whole bunch of motherfuckers who said, thank you for that, and I did that, and I've accomplished that, and now I get it. Because that's what I'm hearing in class, but there's no reason I'm going to talk all this time on the radio and nobody's going to be able to say those things as well. Most definitely. As well, um, so, so yeah, you can meditate all by yourself, kid, and 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 and, and get your accomplishments on. Exactly, yes, you can. I, 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 I most, I, I most definitely will. The, uh, the only uh, one more thing I want to say, real quick. Um, I came, I came across you, brother, panic in like oh nine, uh, right before I got booked. Um, oh, it was the the Michael Jackson show you did with Bobby Hemmett, mm-hmm. and. That shit blew me away, you know what I mean? Um wow. but I I, I had been on um been on Bobby hit Bobby Hemmett for um a number of years and a lot of the books doing what I was doing at the time, um, I was able, able to afford. Mm-hmm. So um I, I had started started to build up a nice little library. Um mm-hmm. all that said, I'm glad I did because, you know, <laughs> being with the current circumstances now, you know, I'm 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 pretty proud that I I at least have that to show for myself. Right. But uh, all that all that said, I, I am very much anticipating your book. Yeah, I'm I'm I went hard on it now. Like I said, I have I thought it was just you know I know I was going hard in detail, but the sister who's editing it, um, uh, uh, Kirsten Melby, if you're on Facebook, I'm sure a lot of y'all maybe are friends. She she's. Like, like when I first announced it six years ago, she was like, oh, this is what I'm here on the planet to do. So six years later, she said she looked at that original email. She said, actually, six years ago. She's finally editing it. She's on She's on to be about halfway done, and she's going through it. And so she's the first one to really give it a good read. And, and, she, and she's been conscious all this time. So this is not just a person. This is a person who's in that loop if she's not even in the chat room now. And she's been saying this shit has been she she's been giving me a lot of good feedback. So so judging from her, this it looks like it's gonna be um uh 
the anticipation was worth the wait. It, it looks like it because I wasn't sure. I was just re, you know I was just writing like I was usually talking. But I feel there's some hot shit in there. I tried to go very detailed on what I did talk about. I said one chapter. I, I dealt with the efeminization of the black man for real, without the homophobic aspect of it, but the real scientific mind control aspect of that shit. And just one chapter of that is uh, just uh, like I said. I was just gonna go with the hot Hollywood motherfuckers, but it turned out that every single black man in Hollywood I showed. It, out of five ways how they were effeminized, every single oh. one, starting with putting on Word. a dress, symbolically showing their ass, which was symbolic of the slave trade. Oh. Or even even yeah. we, we come to think, well, he showed his ass, but he was having sex with a black woman. We got to remember, your slave master used to sit in front of you while you had sex with your woman. And watch that suck up the in- and watch, mm-hmm. suck up the in- That's what's happening on screen. You know what I'm saying? Sim- oh, kiss, symbolically kissing another. So di- them just showing their ass. You know, Spike Lee will have a nigga show his ass in a minute, thinking it's some prowess shit. That's, uh, no, that's some slavery shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of course, wearing a dress, kissing another man. Doing the um, butt. Cool, right, doing the butt. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Cooning and all that. So I, 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 I narrowed it down to, like, five things you will always see once in the career of, of uh, you know, it's obvious with a dress, but subtle shit, subtle shit right. with Rocky, subtle. I, went, I mean, I'm talking. We went. I went in on some subconscious shit. Rocky and Apollo. Apollo being the name for Horace, and and whatever. Right. It was, I, I went at the time. I, I remember going through the detail of the Rocky and the Hol- um in the Apollo Creed. Your creed, the, the creed of Apollo is the creed of Horace. How Rocky was symbolically beating Horace and. All this kind of shit like that. Mm-hmm. So much so, when they did Expendables, they had Terry Crews as the black tough guy. You know that was supposed to be fucking Apollo. Or even Mr. T. Fuck is Terry Crews with all these old motherfuckers. It was a terrible movie, Expendables. But he put all Dolph Lundgren, who he did, who he, put, he bust Dolph Lundgren's ass in a Rocky uh, franchise. He didn't no, put Apollo was or in Mr. Movie. T. Huh? My yeah, aunt was actually uh, in that movie. Oh, oh. She, which part? She was the. She was the. Um. Uh. Her name is Diana Lewis. She's a newscaster from Detroit. She was the black. Um. The black female reporter that asked Rocky the question when he came back in the beginning. Okay, I got to look at it again. And now, I'm, now I'm going to look at yeah, it. I may, yeah. I may have it here somewhere. The first one. First one. Yeah, that's um. um Rocky Four. Oh, oh no! In Rocky Four. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. yeah I, don't, I don't have none of those rituals, but we can probably find, <laughs> find that on Netflix. Yeah, I, I could, I could, I wasn't a Rocky kid. I couldn't right, fuck right. with it. Even back then, I couldn't fuck with Rocky. Right, but we break down also Rocky to be the um the um mm-hmm. the testicles. You know what I'm saying? You know, and remember Test- that um testicles was taken from him by his Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. You know, as um as Seth took the eye of his root. So he's right. taking so you know Rocky goes rock, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, so he yeah. go Apollo, and like you said, Apollo and um, you know uh, Rocky fighting, and then of course that's when like that conquering here. Right. And yeah. for that, um, um the, you know the cracker ended up getting a statue, you know what I'm saying, put up in Philadelphia. Right, got a statue put up. Yeah. Got it, right. Yeah, oh, it was crazy. And there was something else too. Um, that I brung up in it. Uh, I can't. I can't remember something symbolically. I can't remember. It's, it's in the, all in the book though. When I was in that zone, but but I remember. But but he, he didn't even show like you know like I said with Terry Crews when he did the Expendables when he brought Dolph Lundgren back. He brought all of these OGs back. You know that black dude was supposed to be either Apollo who's still working. Carl Weathers is still working, and he's still uh-huh. hot. Ooh, he's hot. He's he's hotter than any of them because he he had that little thing in Arrested Development, which was a very hot show. If nobody knows about that show, real funny show. Oh. But Carl Lewis was still working. You know what I'm saying? In fact, he was he was a little bit hotter than the rest of them motherfuckers. Right. So long story short, wow. anyway. Anyway, and I can't remember. I said some other stuff about. But I mean, I go through the detail. You know what I'm saying? Not right. just Wesley Snipes wore the dress. That's obvious. But like, right. there's. I mean, there was a time where I was like, name any black actor. 
boom, niggas was trying to catch me, but I was like, nope, he did that, he did this, he did that, he did that. It was about five, I couldn't find nothing on, or it wasn't worth bringing up, really. But other than that, niggas sold out at one point, to the point where I put this all under one umbrella, it, that just alone. Forget all the other metaphysics and all the other shit, because I wrote about uh, Necronomicon, Lords of Tahuti, Chakras, all, all of that kind of good shit. Just that shit alone is going to fuck niggas up. Because that was going to be a book, but I'm like, ah, right, you know, I got too metaphysical. I can't leave too much. You know what I mean? I couldn't just do that alone. But just that part alone is going to fuck people up. And and then what I tied into. So this is going to be well, well worth the wait. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's it's overdue. It's time for me to get out. It's like, it's old for me, so each time that book shit come up, I get a fucking headache. Like, oh, God. But uh, Curse was like, look, motherfucker, you need to finish the rest of this goddamn book. Let's just get it done. I'm like, all right, you're right, because too many people are asking, and so on and so forth, and it will be soon. All right, well, so. I greatly appreciate it, Brother Panic. I'm, I'm on your no Facebook, problem, Dr. Lean. I'm, I'm also on yours. Please continue doing what you're doing, and peace. Yeah, that brother, peace, peace, peace. For, for your situation, visualize where it is you want to be. That's, that's all you need to do. Meditate in, like, because I know you said you were in a little bit of a situation. Do your visualization yeah. and see yourself. Just act it out. See yourself in that place. I most, I, I most definitely will. I and, most and, definitely and, will. And it, it happens. I can't believe that, that, that little particular shit is what works. In fact, that's uh, one of the, you heard in the Bible, and a child will lead them and all the rest of that. But they're talking about the child mind because that visualization is the child's mind. In that same in that other same movie, uh, Gateway to Fairy, like this kid is look because that same dude made fairy houses and the kid is looking at uh, the fairy houses and saying, "I don't see the fairies." And then the, the the dude said, "No, no, they're right there. Just look." He said after he gave the girl permission to see the fairies, she gave him twenty minutes on sh- on a story. So a kid does this easy. Remember when you was a kid? Remember when your your sister had uh, uh, tea parties, or when you had 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 superhero friends, all invisible? It's the same thing. Right. Make it real. Your invisible friend that's protecting you under the bed. It's the same concept. You know what I'm saying? So you want to see yourself in your house, know it, feel it. If, 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 if that's what you're going for, a new place, see see yourself walking through the door. You know what I'm saying in your shower, every detail counts. Hard visualization. Hard visualization. And that little shit alone works. I All wish you, I, I wish you I got a bunch you. of power, and I'm sure you'll get what you want, brother. I appreciate it. I will be talking to you soon. No problem, bro. Peace. Peace, Lord. Peace, 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 Peace man. Right, we're going to go to area code 870. Area code 870. You're on the line. Hello? Peace. Hello? Peace. Um, how are y'all doing this evening? Fine, so how are you doing? I'm doing great. Right. I can't believe I'm actually on air because I have called nearly for the past four years and I've never really been on the air. So thank you for wow. taking it. <laughs> thank you for finally getting my call. And I really appreciate, Brother Panic, what you do, Brother Eileen, what you do. I just want to say, I love both of you. And Glad to have you. All right. I just wanted to say that. Um, I'm getting ready to sign up for your class, Brother Panic. I've been trying to yes. sign up for it, but every time, if, I don't know, it's just been like a system of, I'm sorry, it's been like so many different obstacles in my way, but just coming up well, today. Well, in due time, in due time, the classes will keep going on, so whenever you're ready, it'll be here. And I'm also yes, glad to be here on your monumentous, monumentous calling event to be a part right. of you finally getting through after four years. Exactly, four years. Right. Well, I, four I have, years. Huh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. That's it. Four mm-hmm. years. That's a whole Obama right. term. Well, exactly. Right. Well, I actually uh, got into it in '08 because that's when I had my child. That's my my baby. But uh, mm-hmm. that's I I had listened to some some Bobby mm-hmm. Hennig. Um, there was there's always been a part of me that wanted to know the dark side that had I always been a part. Mm-hmm. Ever since I was uh, in high school, I, I kept having these 
funny because I just didn't fit in. I mean, it just seemed like everybody around me was dead. And I was always zoning out like, how in the hell did I get in this body? You know what I'm saying? I wanted to know about the dark side, but I was afraid of looking stupid to my peers. So, you know, I just played mm-hmm. along. And when I went to college, I was about to graduate. And so then that's when I got into you guys in 2008. And uh, mm-hmm. it has been kind of like on and off. I'm like, I'm wondering if the spirit is trying to block me because I want to get, I want to learn more. But every time I sit down and read a book, like the books that you and Brother Bobby uh, recommended, I got like about 150 books. But when I sit down and read it, something happened. It's like my mind won't stay focused. I'll read mm-hmm. about 10 pages. I'm mm-hmm. serious. I'll read about 10 pages and then go on to the next book and then go do something else. So I'm at a point in my life where even though I got about 150 books, I'm like, I'm just going to have to take the class, and I'm going to have to, like, uh, just just see where the class takes me because my daddy just died, and I would just like to take it real slow. I don't want to consult all these deities and things like that. And so I was just wondering, like, do, mm-hmm. do you have any, like, advice for me for trying to come mm-hmm. communicate with my daddy in the spirit world? Yes, I do. First thing is first. We, we never should be scared of, like, all of these deities, all of these spirits, you know all right. that. that? That there's really no such thing as that. Um, um, or, or that mentality comes from movies, basically. Movies and white people. Um, first and foremost, what is a deity? And I'm, I'm asking that question, what's a deity? I well, I, um, well, it's like isn't it an advanced uh, being that used to be here on the earth? I mean, because I I know a whole lot of stuff. I just don't know how to put it into mm-hmm. terms because I know you know Bobby said okay. we're supposed to become the deities and things like that. But okay. I, I don't now, do now, and I don't want to. Yeah, I want to put you on the spot, but see, that's that's exactly what I'm talking. When I ask, people got the idea, but they can't just narrow it down. You get what I'm saying? Right. Right. Um, generally, a deity is actually uh, is really just a description of uh, energy that is, uh, you don't even have to say it's advanced. Because of our worship of it, we call it advanced. Um, but uh, happiness is a deity. Sadness could be a deity. Um, uh, uh, sex could be a deity. You get what I'm saying? Now, uh, or there's different types of deities. A deity is generally not... um, See, this is is where it gets confusing. A deity is generally, at at, at its core, not someone who's been on the planet. Though someone who's on the beat, though someone who's been on the planet can deify themselves. All right? So... So, in other words, a deity is generally so. Oshun's a deity, but she's never been on the planet. But if you, but all she represents is the energy of love. So, if you, if I, I, there's no way I can explain to you love. So, what I would do is take love and give it the characteristic, give it a color, give it a day of the week, give it a mythology, and give it a name finally, and then let's call it Oshun. And then I tell you stories, you can't do this, you can't do that, because all I'm really trying to do is not saying she'll be mad at you. Later on we say that. But what we're really saying is, all all we're really saying is that this is how you handle love. So, for instance, if I was courting Khadijah, I definitely know I need to put my best foot forward. I need to come dressed right. I need to come smelling right. I need to become prepared to take her out. I don't go meet her and go, well, you know I ain't got no money, right? Well, you know you got to pay for that. That's going against the grain. That's making the deity called love mad, if you will. In other words, that's going opposite of what dating is. You get what I'm saying? Normal dating is. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah, you take characteristics and personify it into yeah, you energy. Right. So, so b- basically... Where we where we're at now is like oh you can't do that or these deities will be mad or Oshun will be mad or I'll be biting off more than I can chew. That's later day, but that's only really based upon you knowing how to act. So that's why I'm using the example. If I was on a date, I would know how to act. 
with a lady. You get what I'm saying? So I, there's, in other yeah. words, there's nothing to fear if I'm getting if, if I if I say to myself, I'm ready to go on a date. Then that means I I know I need to put on a nice shirt, some nice shoes. I can't exactly. I, I can't come with holes in my pants. Exactly. That's, in other words, I don't have to be a genius. I don't have to be spiritually inept. There's nothing that's blocking me. There's nothing that's stopping me but my own self, right. my own confidence. So when you're reading a book and says, well, something is stopping me, it's not the spirit. It's you who's saying, I'm not ready. Because in a long roundabout way, that's what you told us today. I'm not ready. I think people are going to laugh at me for dealing with the dark side if I ask these questions. That's the core of it. You don't feel you're ready. When you go, I'm ready, all that shit open open up like 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 you know, like like a like a prostitute, you know what I'm saying? A prostitute who's on check day, on sale or check day. It will open right up. It's you who's stopping you. There's no force these now these deities, which are nothing but different energies or definitions of energies now with names are nothing but definitions or descriptions of you, your subconscious mind, your melanin. For instance, we like to talk about Kundalini. There's a goddess named Kundalini. You get what I'm saying? Kundalini is a deity. So we don't have to say, oh, Kundalini is going to be mad at me. You know what I'm saying? For saying I'm going to raise Kundalini. It, it, doesn't, it, it, right. it almost doesn't add up. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like are you ready to raise Kundalini or are you ready to go on a date? So I would have to say to myself, am I ready to go on a date? Am I ends of the gather? Not only can I take it to this movie, can I take it to another movie? If she wants to buy a hot dog, you know what I'm saying? Can I spring for one? If I go, I can't do it, then I'm not ready. I'm scared. She's going to be embarrassed. She's going to be mad at me. All the things we say about deities. So a deity... We um we need to under, we need to demystify it. It's just only a description of energy. Now, if you are a human being of a human mindset, what you're hearing Bobby talking about is he's on a path to deification, meaning he is becoming these energies by releasing humanity. You get what I'm saying? See, I have tapped into these energies that we call Oshun, Ogun, the Pantheon, Anubis, Kali. You you. Anything you can name, especially anything popular, I've tried to deal with it, tap into it, or go, ooh, what's that? Because that means I am connecting with that energy or that deity, and I'm deifying myself. I'm becoming that energy. Now, if I was at Walmart, you will say, that's just a regular guy buying pillows and Frankfurter buns. You get know what I'm saying? But me as an occultist, I have dealt with, based upon knowing these energies or knowing these deities, or knowing thyself Because all of these deities are only Descriptions of you So it's so when I hear someone saying I don't know if I should do that I don't know if I should do that All you're saying is I don't know if I should check myself out I don't know if I should deal with myself There is nothing to fear There is no such thing as you dealing with deities And too much shit happening There's only you believing too much shit happening And then too much shit happening Based upon you believing that too much shit happening, whatever that is for you. You get what I'm saying? But see, once we take away big words like deities and entities and only talking about energies, you're only right. talking about energies. And when you right. understand you're only talking about energies, I would never get enough. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If, like, like if I was a guy and, and somebody said deities were pussies, we wouldn't be even having this conversation. Or deities with titties, oh, just I'll suck, I'll suck the whole Africa dry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> trying to deify myself. I'll suck the nipple of Africa dry. Trying to deify myself. You get what I'm saying? If deities was welfare, you know what I'm saying? We would be lined the fuck up around the corner. I want to be a deity. I want to deify. And we see, we don't, but we see it as a big deal or something that you're getting with that's beyond you. No, this is you. Every single deity that you can deal with is nothing but a detailed description of a certain portion of your power. Call it love, call it war, 
call it kundalini, call it chakra, call it root chakra, call it indigo, call it call it melanin, call it pineal, call it call it prana, call it chi. They're just definitions. Remember, I talked about this last week about literature and how how literature is nothing can only amount to a bad case or bad bad lit, or words can only amount to a bad case of literature or lecture. Remember, I talked about that last week. Because what these words are trying to describe is a simple idea. All of these deities are you anyway. You are, there's no such thing as the dark side or the light side on planet Earth. That's only how we describe things. Because if you were in a room that was all white but nothing else, you would, just be, you would be just as blind as you are in a room with all black. Mm-hmm. Contrast that creates the difference. So black is representative as negative polarity, and white is representative as light. But it has but it has nothing to do with good versus evil, and you deal with the dark side versus that. The dark side just represents the subconscious mind. It just represents the subconscious mind. So with your whole entire work in magic is about the subconscious mind. It is about taking that leap into the subconscious mind. So there's no way to get around. It's just that looking at spooky objects has nothing to do with the dark side. Because what's dark for you may not be dark for me. For instance, uh, to a Christian, uh, if I look at Wiccan shit, I'm going to laugh. But to a Christian, if they look at Wiccan shit, they don't need Satan Almighty himself. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Do you hear Echo? Is your, is your radio on? Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. You might have to turn yeah, the radio yeah, on. I don't know. Because, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, that's better. All right, so. Oh, um, can we ask questions in your class? Like, do we oh, ask? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. This is this is not a lecture format. Um, I'll do you one better. The curriculum is so thorough, very few people ask. They ask certain questions, but uh, but basically based upon the curriculum, I'm so thorough, so thorough that usually people don't find they find themselves without questions and they try. But you're welcome to. But I, I, you'll find I'm so thorough in what I teach that um, as a teacher I'm very different than a lecturer. Uh, I won't say very different, but you, this is, my class is not an extended lecture. It's a whole different experience with me. And like I said, right. don't take my word for it. You can add, I'll give you email of people who's taken that class. There's people in this room now who's taking the class. Bo Hurdle, you can ask him. And there's Polymar yes, is about I've, to take the class. And, I've, emailed, um, most, I've emailed okay. people, and they've already yeah. uh, told me about it. Some uh, some of them have already said that you put them on the path and they know where to go. And, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep, uh, exactly, because th- that's all we're talking about getting on that path. What I've seen, what disturbs me, and you hear me talk about the most, people talking a good one, but nobody's genuinely on that path. Oh, I'm going to put that right. ass on the path. I'm going to put you and see right. my that, sincerity. That's, my sincerity that's is putting what, that ass on the path. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's, when you say putting on the path, and you know how you come down, well, not when you use the word come mm-hmm. down, but you know how you always talking about how people talk, and they ain't mm-hmm. really doing nothing because I'm still getting the same old BS uh, emails about uh-huh. how you do this and how you do that. And I've right. been studying this. Well, I've been looking at the YouTube because I've been going uh, back and forth to school, but I'm out of school now. Mm-hmm. And uh, my life is kind of in chaos because I feel like ever since I've come into this information, there's a part of me that knows this is the info. This, I know this is what I, I've always wanted to learn. But for my particular situation, I need to have someone who's more educated and that can teach me because me reading on my own ain't going to work. And with that being said, I think mm-hmm. that has something to do with, like, my fear because I grew up on horror movies and things like that. But based on what you and Bobby Hammond always say and Brother Eileen, you know, there's, nothing, uh, mm-hmm. there's no such thing as fear but fear itself. That's just right. Western Western indoctrination, which it exactly. really is because I had – an experience. I don't know if it was a tree spirit or emotep because if, when my daddy was dying, I did some invocations to emotep and I called on Asclepios. And at like three in the morning, I was naked and uh, I was getting ready. I started getting real hot. You know, I thought maybe it was something sexual. 
you know, and uh, I got out. I was ready to get out the bed, and I got halfway off the bed, and someone was there, and they said, "Here's your water," and I got scared, mm. real scared, mm. and I just. Mm. 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 No, that's no, 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 that's no. There you go. That's the shit you want to be doing. You call on some shit, and this shit come with a with a nice, refreshing cup of water. Shit, all the <laughs> right. So, so, no, 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 I can see, I was, and I don't want to. I, I don't want to lose track. I can see. Definitely, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. That or, or fear is just what you do not know. But before I lose this point, and, and I'll let you continue. Because you said something about, uh, you know, it's about really learning from someone who knows more. Um, I don't want to look. I want. I don't want you to look at it like that. Look at it on the level of what I talked about last week, and I always talk about in Western civilization, we were trained to learn incorrectly. So when we're exactly. dealing with our cold science, even the way we're trying to learn our science is not. Pre- we see we're not. We're not theorists. Even Einstein, all, all these white people that are their top scientists, all they really got are theories. That's all. Theories. Theory. Yeah. They're theorists. So they're not, they're not actualizing none of this shit. We are beyond the theories. We are beyond. We, 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 we are the manifestation of it. And anything we understood deal. and teach was the teaching of ourselves. We were only explaining ourselves. A simple idea. You get them saying they see now their understanding is they're trying to figure out what we are. So you so their form of thinking is a second hand experience. So now because we went through their school system, when we hear our ancient information, which is not supposed to be understood with the same technology, you know, you niggas is using Apple <laughs> they on Windows. <laughs> you get them mm-hmm. saying it's a different operating system. So when we hear our stuff, we're hearing it logically, and we're doing it logically. And like you said, you hear it, you know it, you're studying it, you're in school, and, and you had all these books and this and that, but something's not taking you to where you feel it in your heart like you did on your skateboard or like you did when you was on the roller coaster that time. You know what I'm saying? You feel it, you know it, but it's not really taking you – you you haven't become it. That's only because there's a disconnect in how we study and how we learn these things. That's the thing I'm gonna teach you in class: how to take everything you've been dealing with and make it and and actualize it. Everything you've been dealing with and make it yours. Make it work for you on a greater level. So it's not like I'm smarter. I'm just gonna reveal the trick. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Too. Making it a so it has nothing to do with smart. Yeah, we don't, we don't deal with that with with our thinking. One smarter, one's more advanced. That's preachers, and and it's not that you have the same car and vehicle I have. The difference is, I'll just even call myself lucky enough to be able to get into the research at a time and be able to have the ability to explain it, regurgitate it, and explain it back to folks in such a way where I can show you the same trick. So whatever it is you was doing before, I'm not going to change that. You, you, the control is yours. I'm just going to show it how to, for you to intake it and bypass this goddamn Facebook ministry shit that's going on, this YouTube okay, well, ministry shit that's going on. You get what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Well, how I don't want to hold y'all. Right. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just was trying to say, like, how do I uh, get over the fear? Because the experience was great, but. Man, it's good. Well, <laughs> well, well. See, you first. You got to understand. You learn this in class too. What deities are? That's why. That's the first thing I asked you. Once you understand that there's nothing out there, it's your own perception. What's in you that is communicating with you? That you are talking to yourself. That's what. What you're scared is is really the dark side. The dark side represents just the unknown. You get what I'm saying? And that it's filled with fear or has the stigma of fear because fear is what you do not know. So you have to know it. One of the first things, and I'm not going to give away too much, you're going to have to take the class, but one of the first things we deal with, I show people the path to self deification. So, and that path to self deification is to understand the concept and detail of deity. And once you understand what deity is, 
then any deity that shows up, you just deal with energy. You get what I'm saying? For instance, uh, if you look at the appliances in your house as pathways to deities, the microwave, the iron, the TV, the light, the uh, the uh, you know the the radio, the the printer, all of these things are accessing one source, which is electricity. But they are giving form and shape based upon what we define them as. So all of these deities are nothing more than one thing, you. Exactly. They're given form and shape by how you, how, how they're given form, shape, and characteristics based upon their mythology, their name, and their story. So once you understand their story, come on, think about, I, I want you to think about this. There's only, if you called on Imhotep all night, and he shows up, you know Imhotep. What the fuck would he do harming you? That doesn't even make sense. This ain't the mummy part three. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to show up, and these bugs are going to come out and, and, and like, give me, your, give me your, your liver and put it in my divine canopy jar. It's not, that will never, ever, never happen. Nothing close to that. So if you know the deity Imhotep, if it shows up, you know the energy. You know what I'm saying? And this was based upon a man who was here. Now, understand the difference between deity, there's, there's ancestors, there's archetype energies, there's different types of energies. There's grimmery, there's uh, 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 egories, there's, uh, there's, I'm missing about three or four more. Motherfuckers, you can create this thought forms. So th- all of these are just nothing but energies in your own mind. What people are having problems with, for the most part, are thought forms. See, now, because this is what a thought form is. You can create a deity. If, if I say, oh, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I then create a deity called depression. And then the physical forms of depression show up. Because I deified it by keep saying, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. Mm-hmm. So then I created the deity. He's not bad or good. It's just serving me because I created it. But it's not just depression. I can say, you know something, I always get the girls. I created a deity that always gets me girls. I never get the girl. I created a deity that I never get the girl. I say, I'm, okay. I'm always lucky. I always win the big game. Or I'm clumsy. I created a deity that, 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 makes, that, that, that serves me as what I define as clumsy. And then when I say and I've been clumsy for so long, and I did air quotes, and when I say, you know something, I'm not clumsy anymore, that deity will help me trip because it wants to survive. These, it, these, there's in, you give energy consciousness with your thoughts, and it stays around your aura. That's why people see your aura as different colors. You need to understand your chakra system, the basic, because what you're radiating is based upon your own thoughts. Your thoughts are the generator. For instance, and I'll make it real quick, there was a guy, funny-looking guy, my man, we used to work together. We used to work at uh, uh, Time Warner. I was a computer tech. We used to just do the phones, help people get on the Internet via the phone. Long story short, somebody gave me some shit called Wuda, which is a herb that helps clean off your shit. I was like, I'm not using this shit. I'm liking the way my shit is going. Alex used that shit. <clears throat> his fucking computer fucking, his hard drive crashed. I'm laughing. I'm like, yo, nigga, you shouldn't even use that no more, nigga. The next day, we went on the way to work, and this chick stepped off the bus and gave him a look like it was 19... 19- 76, and there was no such thing as a STD. I said, God damn, this is a funny looking nigga. He went over to her. She said, what you waiting for, nigga? Give me your number. I said, well, God damn, that router must have been working for you after all, player. You need to take this. He took it. Another chick, get on the bus. And we got on the bus. Another chick, looking at this nigga, drooling. He gave her his card. When I tell you this nigga got off the bus, we walk into the building. This nigga is walking like a Cosby kid, not like a Huxtable, like the like <laughs> Fat Albert in the gang Cosby kid. You know what I'm saying? Real like Rudy or some shit. You heard the music. He got that. He got an afro like him too. 
Uh, and this nigga just fall and bust his ass. Wow! <laughs> he's fucking oh black hopping up in the air. Boom! Uh, the first thing this nigga said was, I knew it was too good to be true. Hmm. Now I said, oh, now what just happened here? What happened here was he's used to being in this, you don't even have to say low self-esteem, but in a certain place with his self-esteem. So now that you had these events, he put on this ruder, which is something that shocks the aura. Whatever energy is on you, it freezes. That's what a spiritual bath does. That's what all of these things, do. it freezes. But if you think the same, you bring the energy back. So the idea is you also change your thinking once you clean the energy off of you, the low thought frequency off of you. So now the ruder clean this low thought frequency off of him. That frequency is fighting to survive. It doesn't exist nowhere but on his aura. It doesn't exist nowhere but from his own thoughts of his own self-reflection of himself. So when he's getting this higher vibration, yeah, I am that nigga, Cosby Show nigga. You get what I'm saying? That energy bust, made him bust his ass just so he could say these words. I knew it was too good to be true. Puts him back in the same thought frequency. Probably never called a chick, and his computer's worse fucked up than it is. Fighting to survive based upon a thought form. So if anything's going to kick your ass, it's your own thoughts. So your your fear, you're being scared. You have to you have to erase that because you create exactly. deities that are serving you. It's not doing it because it's bad. It's doing it because it's saying, well, that's what you want. If you're saying I'm clumsy. Let me give it to you. You're God. You're goddess. So let me give you what you want, clumsy. Or your definition of it. You say you have good luck? Sure. I'll give you what you want. Good luck. You say you always get the girl? I'll give you plenty of girls. You say I can't get no girl but this girl? I'll keep showing, I'll keep bringing her to you because you're the God. So you need to understand thought forms. There's a book called Creating, Creating Magical Entities by, who's about Cuttingham? Um, hold on. Uh, I'll find I out. The I have the book. I have the book. I'm gonna find out the name. Can you see who, whose name is that? Um, it, it, she, he I, I, bought the the I bought uh, the book. Creating I magical energy entities. Yeah, I just want to be able to give it to everybody. But that book, if you yeah. read that book, it, it's it's a little skinny black one. Yeah. Oh, uh, who's that? Yeah, it's by David Michael Cunningham. Creating magical a com, uh, complete uh, guide to entity creation. By uh, creating magical entities by David Michael Cunningham, and um, yes, excellent book. And I'm, you got it, and it goes through the different type of entities that you can create, up into entities that just can help you with traffic. You get what I'm saying? Thanks, Khadija. Now, so yeah. David Michael Cunningham, that's that's what everyone should get so you can understand the concept that you 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 would sabotage your own self, basically with uh, your own thoughts. There's nothing out there lurking. For white folks, it is because the energy that is not conducive to them, so it's too powerful for them. So that's why in the movies they got to draw circles and banishing rituals and do all the rest of that. This is you. This is you. you know what I'm saying so. So you know we need to understand nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear and fear is only what you do not know. It ha- you have to just be educated in what you're dealing with and demystify it. There's nothing out there spooky shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You said you got hot and heated up. You should have been the first one on blog talk radio in the history to say, guess what? I fucked in my hotel. That well, should have been your well, story. We I gave him I gave M Hotep a little ass and for that he cured <laughs> he cured my scoliosis. You know what I'm saying? You should be the first yeah. one in blog talk history to be able to say that. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Laugh at these motherfuckers, man. I, yo, I see these motherfuckers will come. They, 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 they're so full of shit. You know what I'm saying? And so it's so playful. It, it's like once you, once you, the door opens up. Once you get rid of that fear. Once you get rid of that fear, they come sexual. That's why you were feeling hot. They always come sexual. Always. I said, I go into the spirit world with my pants down. All right, y'all ready to fuck? I'm ready. Good night. 
That is totally nigga shit. It's party. It's totally nigga shit. It's partying, fucking, and bullshit. Like I'm sitting there going, ain't no scholarly I, shit I, going I, on. I wish I could have that kind of life. Um, oh, you will. What, what do you take the class? You will. You will. So, it, so tell you. one of my girlfriends, uh-huh. I just, right, because, I mean, I don't know, because, like, one of my girlfriends, you know, I'm a college girl, because when I was in college, like, I had a lot of females inviting me to threesome and foursome, mm-hmm. and I was just, you know, a, a cute girl, you know. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't into all that shit. Right. You know, mm-hmm. that stuff. But now, or whatever, I just settled down a little bit, and I, I kind of reflect back on it, and I wonder what would it have been like if, you know what I'm saying? And that night when uh, the 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 M Hotel came through, for some reason I don't know why. Even though I was scared and been the mug, I mm-hmm. still had that thought about those women that was giving me the invitation. And then I was wondering if I could possibly relive it. And so one of my friend girls, she came over a few days ago, and she was like, "I wonder if it's magic out there that can." Like give you what you want instantly, like in Cinderella. She, was, you know, like mm-hmm. Cinderella would start crying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like you right. heard she started crying, and then the fairy godmother All came. All of a sudden, out. she just come I mean, I know that's just a cartoon. Is that is that possible? And it doesn't work like that. Like uh, what? See what? See you got to look at it this way. Your subconscious mind creates your reality. And and so rich or poor for us, that's we're looking at it logically. Rich or poor is a mentality. You know what I'm saying? Even they'll tell you that in self help books. Rich dad, poor dad. My poor dad thought thought poor, and my rich dad thought rich. So it's a process of bringing yourself there. You get what I'm saying? Now, there's things I've done where instantly it shows up, but it's really remember this: nothing happens. Before a thought, so you had to think it before you can achieve it. That that simply is gonna. So so time really doesn't exist. So which which is another way of saying you can make it look as if it's instant. But if you want to get deeper in that, that that's still kind of an illusion. You know what I'm saying? So there's times I said me and Khadija need that. We walk outside. Oh, the shit is right there. Then there's times they go, we need that, and then maybe it take a while to do it. Depends. The idea is you're you're a scientist, you're experimenting. You get what I'm saying? You're experimenting. But you will find, understand, spiritual sex is not like, because a uh, motherfucker was telling me there's a rumor going out that I know how to go into women's houses and have sex with them spiritually. And just and I'm just roaming, roaming around the planet doing this shit. I'm like, shit, if I could do that hot shit, I would, there would be no time for me to be talking to you niggas tonight. Fucking fantasy. What the fuck is wrong We sit around on Facebook with you even having this debate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you can go to like these women are saying panic. You can show up and just just panic was raping me. I'm like, no, nah, nigga, that's what you want. <laughs> hey, I would not. I would have no time to be on Facebook. Fucking put up fucking Amen. pictures, tag pictures. I'd be too busy. You know what I'm saying? And Khadija couldn't find out. <laughs> oh man, should have be, be on. You know what I'm saying? That's that's preposterous. It's not like you're going to violate somebody like you're a fucking preposterous. You're right. <laughs> it's preposterous. Poppy, <laughs> poppy, <laughs> I wish I could do some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Oh, man. You can't just do that. Just walk around this motherfucker. You just waking up holding your pussy. Oh, my God. Panic was here. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck out of here. Like, I wish I could do that shit. I would get. Fuck, I'd be uh-huh. up fucking 24 hours a goddamn day drinking coffee. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so, that, that's preposterous. But remember. This spiritual thing, all of these things are coming online. So it's a kundalini thing. So what we define as sex or sexual is how a lot of these spirits define communication. So when Imhotep is making communication with you, remember the communication is sexual. 
You get what I'm saying? It's sexual. Okay. So you're feeling well, on a physical level again. sexual. You, okay. Oh, you could. See, see, what you want to do, see, what happens is when you first start, it becomes like hit and miss. Certain nights are better for it. Certain things become better for it. But the more you add, and I teach this in the class, the more you exercise these things, the more you do it at will, the more you can contact whoever at will. There's a point now, if we were sitting right here, I could talk to Michael Jackson. And I don't do that. Wait a minute. Something's coming through. I can feel the impression. You get what I'm saying? I can feel who's in the room. I I, I could be talking and be like, damn, Jimi Hendrix just came into the room. Because the, the energy and the connection is there. I resonate on the frequency where they exist. I deal in that level of light. So I can talk to them like we're talking now, but I'm not, I don't go into the dramatics. Wait a minute, everyone hold hands. I'm like, no, 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 we need to do that. We need to go here. Now I'm feeling Jimmy's, you know, put on that music, put on that music, put on that song. It's the mood and inspiration that I'm so tuned into, I can tell when they're there. I could, this time I'm talking just see motherfuckers standing around other motherfuckers looking frustrated because they're trying to tell you, but when you have such human thought, your human thought represents like a sludge. It represents like a uh, mud. So that light can't make it through that mud. You get what I'm saying? So so when, once you start to relieve yourself of that human thought, and primarily fear, primarily fear, it doesn't happen if you're scared. You get what I'm saying? So once you, once you relieve that, once you know there's nothing out there that really can like, motherfuckers who went crazy doing it was already crazy. You can believe that. There's no – the craziness that so-called comes with this spiritual work has everything to do with uh, – has everything to do with the ego. I've seen motherfuckers' egos go insane, uh-huh. insane. And and I said, oh, I get it. That You're not going to be sitting, like, dealing with spirits and you talk to a fire hydrant. You're going to fucking start believing your own press. You know what I'm saying? Believing you came from fucking Zamunda or some kind of shit, and everyone else hasn't. Or many different things I've seen where motherfuckers just went. They went, they, they, and there's a name for that. It's called ego poisoning. And Alan Cardiac's book, it's an old book, and it's called The Spirits Book. And it's a book about, it's an old, old 19, or eight, maybe like 1903 or 1913, and it's a whole book about him talking, having ch- all of channels. And so it's a hard book to read all the way through, but if you pick it up and look through a couple of spots, you'll find some interesting things. And one of those things okay. he talks about is the ego and ego poisoning, how this information can either go to the heart or it goes to the brain. And if you and, and talk about the logic the creative mind, the exoteric understanding, if it goes that way, then, um, you know, ego. the ego goes out of control, and you, and you have, and that's the madness of dealing with spirits. You know what I'm saying? You become walking around here with robes and lotions and dashikis and shit on. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. idea is can you, can you, you remain know, yourself? Know. Can you remain who you are and true to your heart when you deal with this shit? That's that's the true test of someone dealing with it. I am the same motherfucker that I I was before. I'm gonna curse and spit and say like Shabazz, brother Shabazz told me something interesting because I'm like, damn, I hear myself. Am I cursing for all this dramatic point in these lectures? Shabazz said, nigga, if anybody knows you, you curse like that anyway. You said, motherfucker, let's go to the movies, motherfucker. Let's go get something to eat, nigga. What the fuck you doing? He said, no, that's not a. Pro-. He said it. It made me understand. Oh, you think? No, nah, you ain't performing. That's how you you curse like that anyway. That's who you are. Right. I said, okay, I feel better. And and the, and the point is, um, it, it, it's another indication. No, that's who I was. Ain't nothing changed. I don't curse to be more spiritual or or to make it sound like I'm making an extra point. I'm just a foul mouthed little bastard. You know what I'm saying? And um, in 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 uh, you know, so and the. And then, you know, there was a period of, oh, I can't deal with these dead niggers and these dead niggers. Now, shit, that's all. I, I don't want to deal with these conscious niggers. I can't wait to talk about Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so all my friends who were dead and all that shit are still my friends. They're not based, meaning this shit it ain't make me, it ain't a personality thing. I'm the same same motherfucker, which means going through this shit, it's a self-transformation. It ain't got nothing to do with social behavior. 
I'm saying so this shit is just dumb anyway. But I wouldn't have been hanging with these dumb motherfuckers whether I was conscious or not. You know what I'm saying? Some motherfuckers you just outgrow. So some of my best friends who ain't into this shit. I'm, they're not gonna be my friends because I'm walking around saying Kundalini. So it's that type of men, that type of poisoning or ego is the is the madness that people go through. Going crazy from dealing with fucking Imhotep will never happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you'll okay. notice it is always sexual. Like I said, when you get rid of the fear, that's when more of that will happen. So don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't try to talk to Imhotep again. Try to do something that you know is easy. You know what I'm saying? The next step. Like, like the to, fairies? Like the fairies? Yeah. Is, is I, that I, I got it. Okay. Yeah. But I was mm-hmm. scared of them, too, because I put... I. I went and did something. I think you you said or somebody suggested where you go out in the mm-hmm. yard and and talk to the tree and hug the yeah, tree and kiss the tree. And I just mm-hmm. introduced myself and I told them that I was a dead nigga. Pardon French, but I said I was a dead nigga like everybody else on the planet is dead. And I said, you know, I I invite mm-hmm. you into my life mm-hmm. and like later, but mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. called French. my phone. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you. Nick, two things. Niggas not French. That is, that is just some good full fashion nigga shit. Um, but uh, and I'm only I'm only joking. Yeah, but that's but it. They, but, see, I, you, but you notice when they, you ask for something, you're getting something back. But don't, they only came through that, that. once. Uh-huh. They didn't come back no more because I got scared. Well, they gonna hang around you. They gonna hang around you because <laughs> they like your personality. No, you yeah, call on the you got to call on the energy. You got to call on the energy. Been, and mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I've been calling on them. I really want to talk to them. The first time, it threw me mm-hmm. off guard because somebody called my house talking about, um, do you know someone named Ted Andrews? I was like, no, I don't know anybody named Ted Andrews. And he was like, you sure? And I was like, no, sir. And he was like, you don't know anybody named Ted Andrews. And I got mad. I was like, no, I don't fucking know anybody named no, goddamn Ted Andrews. He was like, well, all right, see you later. <laughs> and he hung up. And I was like, what the, what the fuck is that? Pardon my friend. I was like, who the hell is that? And then I went outside, and the book that you suggested called uh, Enchantment to Fairies by Ted right. Andrews. And I was like, whoa. And then as soon as I picked the book up, I heard somebody start laughing and knocking on the door. And I and then I saw something out the corner of my eyes, and then I just got really scared. And I was like, hey, y'all don't. Don't scare me. And then after that, they <laughs> wouldn't contact me anymore. And you're right. See, I'm asking. You I'm inviting them. Everything, everything, you said, you said, you said, you everything leads to your scariness. You got to yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get over it, panic. I'm trying to get over it. I keep going back. I put some bread out there. I used to be, used to be scared of fairies. You used to see P- Tinkerbell. <laughs> How you be scared of Tinkerbell? <laughs> I, was just like, I was saying, how do I contact them again? That's all I was trying to okay, say. I well, wouldn't be scared of I, I, I do that in detail in class, but oh, okay, um, okay, you want, okay. but but no, it's all good. The tree or nature that we talked about earlier is a gateway, so you want to be able to feed it. You want to communicate. Remember when you had a doll as a child? That doll was real. If your brother took that doll through down the stairs, all hell broke loose. It was like she really threw you a real child down the stairs. Or like I used to talk about my sister's doll ain't had no fucking hair. And she used to lose it. She used to fucking lose it because a girl knew how to make that doll real. I'm saying, y'all would breastfeed if you motherfucker would let y'all. You know what I'm saying? Baby alive. Y'all had a mentality which you're taking an inanimate object and making it uh, and giving it life. Y'all were breathing life into this inanimate object. Call a doll. Guys, we did it with our Superman action. We, we don't have dolls. We had action figures. So we did it with our action figures. So you're doing the same thing with that tree or some form of nature. You're creating a gateway by first making an introduction and communicating with it, feeding it, uh, 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 acknowledging it the same way you did as a, as a life. You don't go outside and acknowledge the tree. Now, now, we need to think about this on a practical level. Can trees hear your voice? You're fucking right. White people have been telling you that for years, so you know it's real. White people say, what happens when you talk to your plants? Um, Come on, you know what white people say. They Right, you talk to your plants, they grow. They talk, white people like oh, yeah. when you talk to your plants. White people said it, so it's real. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it real. So that means plants react to voice stimulation. The end. They react to voice stimulation. 
So it's the same concept. Now, if you take it to the next level, if you do the same thing, you ask in that tree and you communicate with that tree. See, also this too, but I noticed, you don't want an agenda. You know, don't try to top some shit you just did. Every day is an adventure. So I don't go to the tree to say, I want to, you gave me some pussy, you gave me some titty last time, so now give me some pussy. You get what I'm saying? No, you just, each, each, each day is, because it represents your subconscious mind telling you what it needs to tell you. So you don't want to sabotage that with, um, you don't want to sabotage that with, your, uh, with, with your agenda, you get what I'm saying? Well, you did that last time, I need that this time. That was dramatic this time, so I need the same drama. What you're just doing is every day is an adventure. Every day is a, every, every day is an adventure. Every day is, uh, uh, every day is, well, let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? And one day Tom Green calls you, and the next day, you know what I'm saying, you, you may just get a card from your mother or, or, or goddamn nothing. It doesn't matter. You're, you're not in it just to have a dramatic story. You're in it because you understand the concept is actually bonding, the bonding point, because that tree is an aspect of yourself as well. You get what I'm saying? So it's a symbolic way or a symbol of a way to talk to nature. You create the gateway. You following? Okay. Yes, sir. So you, yes, do sir. Things, you, you, you do things, like I said, the easiest way is one of the things I teach in class. The easiest way, you have the same mentality you had when you were, uh, had your baby doll. You took something that was dead and you gave her a personality you gave her a backstory. Story. You had multiple dolls. Each of those dolls had a story. You get what I'm saying? So, so it's the same yeah. thing. You give your tree a story. Your tree is out there protecting you. Your tree is out there guiding you. You know, helping you. You need to heal the tree. Tell your tree, I need you. I need you to help me heal. You get what I'm saying? You sit by. You give okay. it water. You give it food. Um, and certain people find themselves more adept in that area than certain. With crystals, you may not get results from the tree, but don't beat yourself up. Try some candles or some crystals. There's a, a sister, uh, Kiana, who takes the class. She's a depth. She's, she, she came through the door knowing she was a pan energy. So when she got to the fairy shit, she she, she was telling me miraculous shit. She said, they, they, she said, first and foremost, she used to take her daughters out there, and her, daughters used to, her daughter used to describe the fairy in detail. Oh, I can see them. She said, this one, has, it's like, Mommy, what's wrong with you? What's your problem? Like, why can't you? And, like, she gets annoyed when everyone asks them, well, what they look like. She's annoyed. Oh, here we go. She's got this on and that on and this one in detail. And then then she said, after um, they started feeding and doing all the cakes and all the shit and liquor and all, they just getting with these trees. She said, shit, these squirrels started coming. She said, now these squirrels just following them everywhere the fuck they go. She said, so she said she could feel it wherever she's going. They see these squirrels and the squirrels are protected. And nature responds back. As Aline pointed out, these animals talk to you back. So it's like you don't want to look for specific results. You just want to, you know that this shit works. And you, you, you got to go, you got to go, you can't dip your feet, you, you can't dip your toe in the pool. You got to go all in. You get what I'm saying? All in. Right. So, okay. So I mean, so because everything I hear you talking about, I hear something to do with fear, or I got scared. That's going to shut it off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you, okay. If you put up the heart to do one thing, but then, then you shy away from the results. That's subconsciously telling you, I don't want these results. You telling yourself through fear, I don't want that to happen again. You get what I'm saying? And it won't, because you're, you're you're the master. So okay, well, I just get rid of the fear, basically. I'll, I'll work on that's, that. That's, that's, the, that's I... the key. And really, fear is what you don't know. So knowledge is the way to get rid of that fear. You're going to have to see. One of the things you should do is go slow. Find a deity that that like like you did with Imhotep. Find everything you can about Imhotep. You can go online, get a book. To the point where there's nothing about that that can possibly can possibly scare you. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And communicate on whatever level. Meditate and see what you see. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 
And, and you know, you just can't be scared. You just, I mean, uh, I, I, I won't lie. When this shit was happening to me, a certain amount of shit, I'm going, all right, I'm not going to be scared. I just see little midgets and shit around my room. Wake up, ah! <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? And I was like, fuck that. But then I knew, I knew, like, um, I, I knew, I was like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this shit popping. You know what I'm saying? My thing was like, I know it can't. I just have to tell myself. This shit is not there to hurt me. So I know it ain't easy. You know what I'm saying? Wake up and see little dirty Camite niggas. I can hit with a little. Get off. You know what I'm saying? I woke up one time. My grandmother was massaging. My grandfather was massaging my brain. I'm like, uh, get wow. off of me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I don't want to wow. see spirits. I want to feel it. Smell them. I mean, I was getting ill. I was probing everything. I'm saying, I'm going to taste. I used to taste what I used to have to give niggas libation. I used to be. Add on 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 the, on the little channel and shit. Hey, you need to get that motherfucker some jelly donuts. Watch what happened. Oh God, panic! <laughs> I was getting ill with it. Um, who? Like my shit was like this, this shit, I should have wore a fucking big hat with a ruby in it at one point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just walk around this motherfucking elections with a big turban with a fucking ruby in that shit. Call me mysterious, mysterioso. Or some shit like that. Who in your family wore the red shoes? Oh, my grandfather. <laughs> he says, you must lie to him. <laughs> Acknowledge him. And on Wednesday, go to the museum. Oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> yes, call me Mysterio. <laughs> call me Mysterio. <laughs> yeah, but that should well, take a lot of energy. <laughs> that should take a lot of energy. <laughs> First world on the radio. Final lead. Final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics Of sound through the air same as your thoughts transmits it Proceed in others in time, order, importance The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments Earthly state of human concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. 